Okay, take off the glasses. Eating one bite quickly and close your eyes. And you will just find intensive in your mind. My trip in the Basque Country was a pretty short one. No time to visit the culinary capital of San Sebastian, but that was more than enough for Bilbao alone. Before I left, me and my friend decided to visit one more Michelin restaurant to wrap up this short trip. As I mentioned, I live pretty far from Bilbao center, so I might as well take the opposite direction to further explore the suburb of Bilbao, and we did just that. We took the train for a while until we got to a town called Getxo. Located at the mouth of estuary of Bilbao, Getxo has beaches and coastlines. It is now an affluent residential area. There was something to see too. The reason we were here was to see a world cultural heritage called Biscaya Bridge. It crosses the mouth of Nervi River and links two towns. It is the world's oldest transporter bridge and it was built in 1893. Designed by Alberto Palacio, one of Gustave Eiffel's disciples, the person that designed Eiffel Tower. That's why the bridge had a style similar to that of Eiffel Tower. After seeing the bridge, we had a quick brunch. We found a small pincho bar not far from the subway station, and they had all kinds of fancy pinchos for as low as one euro per piece. That was some serious value. We could get ourselves pretty well fed for around ten euros. The topping includes croquettes of different varieties. Salmon, changuru, quail eggs, fried fish, and fragua, etc. Plenty to choose from. And of course, we needed to get some beer. The popular choice here was clara, a Spanish sparkling lemon beer that pairs well with the pincho. It was so good that we didn't even bother to talk. We just ate. After the brunch, we explored the region a bit more, and we went to check out the sea. It was quite windy near the coastline, and we didn't venture too far. But I did like the lush green and relaxing, although windy environment. Now we're heading back to be about to eat at a Michelin restaurant. The name is Atelier Channel. Let's go. Now. It was time to get back to Bilbao. Since the choice was kind of last minute, so we had to make do with the reservation we can get. Atelier Echanove, or the workshop of the chef Echanove, according to the Michelin Guide, is a contemporary restaurant which is both intimate and elegant, where the focus is on modern cooking and top quality ingredients, in particular fish. The chef here is constantly looking to surprise guests. Hence, his desire to work with textures, flavors, and very latest technology. We went with the tasting menu. This is cococha, chain of bacalao. It is a very typical Basque dish, and I already had it twice. Once in form of bacalao al pipil, and another time in tortico. It was also presented in this cool-looking 3D printed fish head vessels that my friend thought were gifts for us, and of course they took them away. We left. Ajo blanco, white garlic soup that is a traditional dish in the south of Spain. I see they have like cap caviar, creams, creams. But here, white truffle was used instead of garlic, giving it a delicate aroma.
Yeah, I think oh yeah, this is not good. Mm. Anchovy lasagna. Echanobe's iconic dish. A stew made with ripened de seeded tomatoes and emulsified olive oil. On top, anchovy marinated in vinegar and salt. Okay, Google. What is this? Sunflower oil and green lemon. This is the vinegar. And I'm going to cook, and it will be at the same time raw in the middle and heat outside. Okay? Okay. And the green, we call European wasabi, it's not wasabi, it's spinach and mustard. But this is a way to say tuna and wasabi, but it's not wasabi because wasabi is too much mm -hmm. for European people. Yeah. Yes. It's like a hot wasabi. Uh, hot, hot is a similar. Okay, enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, it's like half raw, half cooked. Mm. With the sauce. Yeah. The blend of the powder is, I don't know how to, how to describe it, but it's in a good way. Mm. I think the oil comes from the tuna itself. Yeah. Yeah. When you scorch it, the, the Probably flame, from the scorching. Yeah. yeah. The flame gets the, the oil from the tuna out, infused with the sauce. Wow. Mm. It's awesome. Mm. Pigeon to eat with our hands with a transparent potato chip. The pigeon thigh was cooked in low temperature to make it super tender. Mm. It's like a super upgraded chicken thigh. Mm. Okay, this one, same flavor from the nature, from the country, sure. okay. in three steps. You have it. You are, you are eating now the first step with three flavors: fennel, tomato, and raspberry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second step, I will you will make here. Mm -hmm. After we we'll put the, these glasses and we will make mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Showtime, and quite interesting ice cream made with white chocolate. It contains tonka beans, an ingredient that carries exquisite scent reminiscent to vanilla, cherry, caramel, and a hint of clove combined. It contains coumarin, potentially toxic in high doses and hence was illegal to export to the United States, which is technically rather unfounded, but either way, it was banned. But not here in Europe. The ice cream was made tableside by dipping the mixture in liquid nitrogen, then served immediately. One bite? Yes. 
And now, in the beginning, you have orange. After you have been chunked, and now you have ginger. And you in three, four, two, one, zero. Now you have ginger. And ginger, it will be with you two minutes. Yes. And this is yes. next one. It's based in Japanese culture. This is short and intensive. This is jusu, violet, and black olives. Yes. Okay. And this one you will also eat in one bite. But before eating that, we are going to make mindfulness. Usually my fullness is one hour. Well, my fullness is one minute. This is a video okay. in 3D. You can watch everyone. I see. And you will see violets, music, mountains, relax, enjoy, watch everywhere, down, up, right. And when you finish, you take off the glasses and you eat in one bite and you close your eyes two seconds. And these two seconds, okay, let's go. Okay. Ah, the virtual reality. Who thought we would be eating while wearing a VR headset? Apparently, the chef wanted to create an environment for you to immerse in while eating to establish this visual gustatory connection. So, what was it? Well, from what I can remember, it was a natural environment with green grassland peppered with some flowers, some trees, a blue sky with moving clouds. It seemed to me to convey a natural feel, albeit the environment was built with low quality models with pixelated image due to low resolution and somewhat oversaturated color, mostly due to the hardware limitation of the VR headset. But hey, what can I expect? They do not work in the game industry. It did the trick, more or less. Okay, take off the glasses. Eat in one bite quickly and close your eyes, and you will just find intensive in your mind. This was a complete experience at H and Orbit, and it was just cool. To be honest, when it came to the flavor, especially the first few items, it didn't give me as deep an impression as that of Sportico, which is another Michelin star restaurant we visited the previous day. But it was then gradually picked up during the later part of the meal and reached its peak at the table side courses. There were several dishes that I enjoyed, such as this ajo branco, anchovy lasagna, the pigeon, and all the desserts. You can certainly see a lot of creativity and enthusiasm that went into this meal, such as this menu being projected onto the table by a mini projector, which I did not film, the 3D printed fish head, the nitrogen ice cream with tonka bean made a la minute, and the VR 3D. It was also quite an experience to have the chef serving some of the dishes table side. Me and my friend agreed that both Tortico and Echanobet were good, but in different ways. I personally liked Tortico's food better, but Echanobet's creativity and performance more than compensated the experience. I had great fun. If you really want me to make a comparison, the flavor of the dishes here were simpler and purer, similar to that of Abac, three-star restaurant in Barcelona, although not as refined and depth of flavor not as deep, which is to be expected since I'm comparing a one-star to a three-star. Overall, Echanobe is a really cool restaurant, and I don't mind recommending it to my friends. This is our entire trip in the Basque Country, short but compact and full of surprises. Now it's time to leave, but I would definitely like to come back to this land of culinary crown. This is Fufski, and I make videos about food, travel, and culture. If you like this video and wanted to see more videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Turn on the notification bell if you haven't already. If you're from Bilibili and have some coins, I'll gladly take your coins. Thanks for watching.